Hi everyone. We are starting this. This is the first video I have for you in the 2020-2021 school year. And we are starting with intervals and inequalities. And intervals, ways of representing intervals. They are, first of all, intervals. We're talking about subsets of real numbers. Um, one of the ways is with an inequality. Here you got a compound inequality. X is greater than negative 2 and X is less than or equal to 3. This is one way of representing it. Now this same interval on a number line would go from negative 2 to 3 and we would include everything in between. So the values of x are somewhere in this interval and this is on the number line. And then there's interval notation. What are the ex values of x? Well, when you have an open circle like that, negative 2 is not included. So you use a curved bracket for the left end of the interval at negative 2 and you'll use a square bracket and that says 3 is one of the acceptable values for x. Negative 2 is the boundary, but it's not a value that x will assume. So an interval of finite length, like this one, is called bounded. Let me get under the camera here. And an interval of infinite length is called unbounded. All right, now let's just look at some examples where we will just kind of just go from one version of the other. We, we're talking about number lines, inequalities, and interval notation, and that's what we're going to do. So if we have a number line, let's write it as an inequality, and let's write it in interval notation. And whichever type we have, let's write it in the other two ways. And then we state whether the interval is bounded or unbounded. So when I look at this one, and I want to sketch an inequality, we're at negative 1. We are going to be our values of x that can be in this interval, in this subset, will be less than negative 1. So there's my inequality and my um, interval notation, the left end. And I'm going to use a curve bracket because you can't actually be this value. But there's no bound on the left end. It does not stop. And on the right end, there is a bound, but it's not included. So that'll get a curve bracket as well. So here's the inequality. Here's the interval notation. And then because when we looked at this, this is an infinite length. It's like a ray when you think of the geometry concepts. A ray and a line would be unbounded, and a segment would be bounded. It's something you can take a measure of. Okay. Next one, we have a inequality here and inequality here, I should say. And let's go with the number line. If I draw the number line here, I'll go negative 2. I should have made it a little bit longer. Let me just extend that. Ignore that part, please. OK, so our, for our values of x, we can have negative 1. We cannot have negative 1, but that is a boundary, and we can go over here to 4, and we'll shade between them. Those are both open circles, and I left them that way deliberately. And it is also interval notation. I need a curved bracket on negative 1, and I need a curved bracket on 4, because those are boundaries, but they are not included as values that x can assume. 
and this one is bounded. We can measure the length of this segment. All right. Number three. This is an interval notation, so I want to write that is, let's see, number line first. Okay. Oh, I see that's positive four. I didn't have to go out this far, but that's all right. I'll just start at zero. Okay. On four, I am going to put a dot on the number line, but I'm going to fill it in, and I'm going to put an open circle at seven, and just go between them. This is another bounded interval, which I'll write down in a minute. But my inequality, x is less than seven, it's greater than or equal to four. x is greater than or equal to four and less than seven. And, like I said, this one is bounded. And number four here, negative two. So we have another, an interval notation. I'm going to draw a number line. Go, let me go this way. 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. I just need negative 2 to be in there somewhere. Negative 2 is the, I got the open circle. And then it goes to infinity. So I'm going to shave this side. Put a heavy arrow here. Make the point bigger also. And then in, let's see, in inequality, looks to me like x is greater than negative 2, and this looks unbounded. All right. First video is over.